Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So this is probably one of the saddest, most unfortunate videos I've ever had to make because I'm here today to talk about BlackBerry 10 phones and it's finally the end. Uh, the official end is supposed to be the 4th of January 2022, which is a couple of days. And it's one of those really, really sad things because so many times over the last decade, BlackBerry has been like a phoenix and it's risen out of the ashes with a new device and a new strategy and a new all sorts of stuff. The story kind of ended the same pretty much every time, but it's pretty much unfortunately game over at this point. The only glimmer of hope we have left is some obsolete Android devices running Android 8.1, which are the BlackBerry mobile devices, the Key 1, Key 2, Key 2 LE and the Motion, and the promise from a brand on mobility that has a licensing agreement with BlackBerry and was supposed to deliver a device by basically June 30th of 2021. And you can see now, if you look at the calendar or your watch or you pay attention to basically you know anything, it's 2022 now. And there's not been an update. There's not been so much as even a tweet. And as far as I know, and in speaking with them, it's still supposed to happen. But at this point in time, there's nothing really to discuss. So all we have right now effectively are some phones that we really, really love that BlackBerry gave us some amazing devices. I mean, I've got so many of them here. I have the BlackBerry Passport, the SE edition. I have the Z10. This is my first BlackBerry 10 device. This is the Z10. I got it with T-Mobile. It's actually got the T-Mobile branding down here. I cannot tell you how excited I was about this phone. So short story, if you were following BlackBerry 10 prior to it coming out, you know that they kind of had a phone that was ready to go. They had an operating system. They ended up scrapping it and redoing it based on QNX and gave us BlackBerry 10, the first phone launching being the Z10, which they tried to compete with the iPhone. And that's one of the problems we have with BlackBerry. They seem to have lost their identity. Like they held on to their identity for so long and they're like, no, 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 we don't need an iPhone. We don't need entertainment. We just need a secure communications device and BBM. That's what people want. And it was, but as people saw more and more of these iPhones and what they could do and the enhanced internet, the actual high speed data at the time, the 2G, the 3G, they were light years ahead in so many different areas and they were able to capitalize and set the trend for the next decade. And unfortunately, whenever you allow somebody to set the trend for you and you're not conforming to it and you're not out in front of it, you get left behind. So that is part of the story when it comes to one of the greatest communications, greatest companies ever as far as technological innovation that is now effectively dead with all except the hope of a device that maybe one day will be here so looking at where we're at now this is actually kind of a twofold problem because not only do the devices no longer have support starting january 4th they were going to die anyway and i think this was part of the reason why they selected now 3g was supposed to be shut off on at&t and t-mobile already and when that happened these phones were not going to work because the BlackBerry 10 devices, none of them support voice over LTE. So this new frontier we're in when it comes to the internet, like if you remember 2G, we did the 2G migration years ago, they got rid of that, then it was okay, we've got 3G. They're repurposing that bandwidth so they can use it for high speed data instead of using it for making phone calls because they believe, they being the you know infrastructure companies that do your cell phone service, believe that you can make phone calls over data which is great except for the fact that a lot of times your data doesn't work well enough to make phone calls. So I don't know where they're gonna fix that. But these phones were had a date with Destiny, whether it was BlackBerry doing the end of life and no longer supporting them, or the phone companies no longer supporting them. Because if you try to use one of them now, even though they were still working with AT&T, AT&T is moving to using only phones that are supported on their network that, that they carry and support using VOLTE. So, they were already shutting off the BlackBerry 10 phones. Earlier this year, people were getting messages saying, hey, your phone's no longer to be supported. They send a lot of people these devices they didn't want and migrated them on their own. So, you know, I hate you, AT&T. But also T-Mobile has also made me mad this year too. So I'm not really a big fan of either right now. Back to Blackberries. So we have the BlackBerry 10 phones and they were amazing phones. And the biggest problem was the software and the lack of app support. The biggest thing with BlackBerry 10 when it launched, I think they, we had Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, Foursquare, they said they were gonna have this library of like 200,000 apps on launch and most of them were just mirrors and shells and worthless apps. If you remember when we first got it, BlackBerry World had like nothing in there 
And then BlackBerry paid a couple different brands like Rovio to bring over Angry Birds and a couple of other different ones. And even worked with EA. There was a Dead Space game on like the BlackBerry Playbook, a couple other EA games. It was a emerging developing platform. But the greatest thing was the operating system. It was so good. And it's funny because back in the day, they talked about these phones as being too complicated, not intuitive, and people didn't like them and were returning them in droves because of swipe gestures. <laughs> swipe gestures. So BlackBerry 10 was very, very innovative with the swipe gesture operating base system. And when you look now at the iPhone, you look at Android, that's what we have. We have swipe gestures all over the place for everything. And it's funny because back then people weren't ready for it. It was unintuitive. They didn't like it and confusing. And now it's the industry standard. You also look at some other things. BlackBerry 10 gave us pop-up messages. So very early on in the BlackBerry 10 development and release, they had pop-up messages. So if you got a message, you got the little display that popped up on the top of the screen and you could click on it and go to the message. Prior to that, in the Android and iPhone world, if you got a message, you just got a notification and you had to go all the way back to the app. It, it wasn't until after BlackBerry 10 did it that they got the idea for that. There was a couple different things that BlackBerry 10 revolutionized in the way we use phones, but nobody wanted BlackBerry 10. It wasn't sexy. It wasn't fun. It wasn't cool. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, you're BlackBerry. It became a stigmatized device and operating system, but... It was held onto because it was so necessary in the private and the government sectors because of the security. And BlackBerry 10 to this day probably is still more secure than a lot of different stuff we use out there today. So I wish that there was a way they could salvage it. Even today, a lot of people value security way more than they did back then. And the problem was is that people were convinced that your phone didn't need to be secure. And that was the whole thing with BlackBerry 10. Your data was secure. Your phone was secure. A lot of stuff. They didn't want things on there that had different permissions and you had to give all these permissions to your calculator app just to, to and it would need your contacts and your camera access and access your, your everything. It was ridiculous. So BlackBerry held on to this closed off, secured environment that protected your identity and your, your data, whereas Google and Apple moved forward with using your data and capitalizing on it and saying, hey, it's okay. Yeah, we need access to this stuff, but you're going to get so many great things. And people are like, well, okay, I'm not getting hacked, so who cares? Well, comfort and the relaxed idea that you didn't need security on your phone in exchange for convenience and moving forward in the future brought about a whole lot of changes, a lot of different apps. And now if you say something in your house and you pick up your phone later, it shows up on your feed whenever you're browsing the internet. So it's a strange new world. Maybe brave, maybe not. Maybe it's a brave new world. But when you look at it, I feel like there's an important place. I feel like even today, if they could release a new version of a BlackBerry 10 phone with just a good secure browser on it and some updated specs, I would still happily use it. Like I don't even need a whole bunch of apps. If I could just use the browser to access most things, a lot of people would probably be happy with that. Maybe there's a place for something like that in the future. But where we're at now, unfortunately, BlackBerry and BlackBerry 10 had their time in the sun. Kind of, more like the glow of the moon than the sun. But John Chen and the board of directors clearly moved on, uh, I think around 2015, saying that BlackBerry is only going to be a software and security services company. It's no longer a smartphone company. I hope one day that changes. I hope one day that BlackBerry can have a return to form. They're actually kind of out there in the front of things when it comes to the new digital world with security and securing things like vehicles and the infotainment systems and all sorts of stuff inside of them medical devices, transport devices. There's a lot of stuff out there, Internet of Things related, that BlackBerry got ahead of years ago and is now an industry leader in a lot of different ways. And, of course, the acquisition of Silence and all the different third-party security stuff they're doing. For, there's a lot they're doing, but it doesn't have to do with phones. Mostly it has to deal with different other devices, hardware, and cars. I just hope one day they get enough money where they go, you know what, we'd like to make a phone again. Because I, I wholeheartedly believe... You need to have a comprehensive end-to-end -end security setup for your phones for communication. You need to have security on both ends, not just on one end. And when it comes to your consumer device, that's endpoint failure. And there's so many different problems that can go on. So I would like to see a return to form one day. I would love to see BlackBerry come back strong and with a really good device in their own operating system one day. I think there is a place for it. I think right now it's not appreciated as much as it would have been in the past, or it might be in the future, but right now, everybody wants their iPhones and their Androids and their cake, and they can eat it too. 
And BlackBerry has apparently felt that they needed to license it out over the years to, of course, TCL. They had the DTEC devices, the DTEC 50 and the 60, and the BlackBerry mobile devices as well with the Motion, the Key 1, the Key 2, and the Key 2 LE, and the promise of getting this all more mobility device one day. So I think there's a place for it. And also the sad loss is these industry-leading keyboards. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that still value and appreciate having a physical keyboard and they held up so well. It was such a delight to type on. And if you've never been able to type on a BlackBerry Passport or on a BlackBerry Porsche P9983 or on a BlackBerry Q10, there are so many different keyboards and BlackBerry made them so well and so beautiful. I look at this. This is my white and gold special edition BlackBerry Q10. And then of course this is the Porsche P9983 which is modeled off the same phone. Beautiful devices. But people don't want something necessarily like this anymore. They don't want to sacrifice the screen real estate. If you look at the trend now, it's basically six inch and up phones. Before it was four inches and it went to five inches. Remember when we got to five inches, they're like, no, we don't need these phablets. And actually the BlackBerry Z30 was one of the first phablet phones. There was basically the Note and then there was the Z30. And mine is right here with five inch screen on it. <laughs> This back when it came out was controversial because people are like, oh, we don't want a phone that big. It was amazing. The BlackBerry Z10 basically capitalized and improved on everything good in the Z10, but also had the upgraded operating system and the faster processor and more RAM. Amazing device. Even today, this is, I mean, if this had updated specs, I would use it in a heartbeat. So it's just a frustrating place to be in being a person who loves BlackBerry for so long. And of course, that was the foundation for my channel when I started. BlackBerry was the reason I started my YouTube channel. I love BlackBerry. I have, I've been using them since 2005. So this is very frustrating and disappointing time in the evolution of smartphones for me because we want a BlackBerry. We're waiting for one that'll hopefully be here that we've been promised it will show up. And then also, Having this long history of all these devices that no longer is going to be supported and drops off. Sometimes technology moves on without you, whether you want it to or not. So I hope that one day that we do get a true BlackBerry phone again. I think there's a place for physical keyboards. I love physical keyboards. I think that there are niche devices out there now that prove you don't have to have the typical slab phone anymore. It's not what everybody wants. And you can see that by looking at the Z Flip 3 in a recent article showing that fourfold, they've increased in adoption and pickup of their new Z Flip 3. People want something new. Not everybody wants these slab phones anymore. They want innovation. They want cool stuff. They want creativity. And I think if you look at the market, you look at where we're positioned, it's kind of like it used to be. If you remember the late 2000s, there were so many phones trying to establish their own identity. There were so many form factors. Motorola was making some really cool stuff, the flipping and the sliding phones. You had the iPhone, you had BlackBerry, you had all these different devices that were out there. And everybody kept consolidating because, well, apparently people didn't want that. They all wanted iPhones. And now the whole market copied the iPhone and now nobody wants that anymore. I mean, people do continue to want to use the iPhone. It's a great device. I'm recording on it right now. I appreciate it for what it is. I respect the products and the hardware that they have. But it's not for me. What's for me is an updated version of this. And I hope that we get that one day. I hope that one day BlackBerry can be super rich and industry leading again and make another phone to complete their end-to-end -end security strategy that they've always been based on and that they believe in. I mean, I believe in that too. So it's frustrating. I think the market is changing, and I think that one day we'll be able to see that again. I hope that this BlackBerry from All Mobility still comes to fruition. That's what I'm being led to believe is going to happen, so I'd like to see that. But at this point in time, it's very frustrating because as a BlackBerry owner, well, I have my BlackBerry 10 devices that are going the way of the Dodo. They're going to be dead on January 4th. And then you have the BlackBerry mobile devices, which are all running Android 8.1, and largely are not available to work on carriers anyway. Basically, you can pretty much use them on T-Mobile. T-Mobile, Mint Mobile, and Metro by T-Mobile. That's about it. You might be able to get one to work on Verizon, but on AT&T, it's pretty much a no-go. And you were supposed to be able to use the Priv or the BlackBerry Key 1 with them, but they're even having problems with those. So it's a very, very frustrating environment to be a BlackBerry owner, to be somebody who loves keyboards and to have the rug yanked out from under you by progress. And unfortunately, that's where we're at right now. So looking forward, the future's not the brightest. 
there's always hope. Hope springs eternal. And I hope that we still get this phone that I've been led to believe is supposed to be here one day. But at this point in time, it's not here. And it's likely not going to be here anytime soon if you look at the way things are going. It's very sad and frustrating moving into 2022, not having this new phone already. And then looking at the other ones dying and not being supported anymore. So stay tuned. As soon as I get new information that I can share, I will put it out regarding the Auto Mobility BlackBerry. And I've got some other videos out there as far as devices that you can switch over to, things that you need to do with your BlackBerry 10 phone. If you watch this before BlackBerry 10 is dead on January the 4th, make sure you back up your phone, save your stuff any way that you can. There's no indication that you'll be able to use your phone, at least not in the US. It may still be able to make phone calls in a 3G environment like maybe Canada or elsewhere in the world, but I'm even seeing stuff that that might not even be supported. All the back-end services for BlackBerry 10 are no longer to be supported. You won't be able to get into BlackBerry world. A lot of the email stuff is not going to be available. The app stuff is not going to be available. BlackBerry Protect stuff. It, it's There's a lot there that is provided support on the back-end by BlackBerry that's no longer going to be there. So you'd like to believe that you can still use what's on your phone, but we don't know what that's going to be like until we get it past the January 4th date, which I don't know. Right now it's January the 1st. So back up your stuff, transfer what you can, disable BlackBerry Protect because in the event that you turn your phone off or need a factory reset it and come back in, the server may not be there so you can access it to get back into your phone. So that's the big concern there. When you disable BlackBerry Protect, go in there, make sure it loads up the data so you can see it, flip the switch. If you see the little circle spinning next to the switch, that means it's not working properly. That means that it's not going to work. If you flip that switch off and then you swipe out or the screen goes off and you go back 30 seconds later, it's re-enabled. You have to make sure all the data is showing up on the screen and then you have to turn that off. So as long as that little spinny circle is there next to the switch when you turn it off, it's not turned off. So be careful of that. You may need to wait and leave it on that screen for a little while. It took me about 20 or 30 minutes to get it to work for me. Disable BlackBerry Protect, back up your stuff, copy things over that you can, and... Good luck in this new frontier without BlackBerry 10. And I will be here to support as much as I can as we move on from this environment and this beloved operating system we've loved and cared about so much. So that's all I've got in this video. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all of you who have followed my channel for all these years for BlackBerry devices, for BlackBerry 10. Uh, I will still be supporting and covering the BlackBerry mobile devices as long as they still work and you can still use them. And one day, once the Onward Mobility BlackBerry gets here, I will have tons and tons of videos on that as well. But for right now, not a whole lot to talk about in the BlackBerry world. So again, thank you for your support. Hopefully you enjoy the other content on the channel because there's not really anything BlackBerry legacy device or tend to cover anymore moving forward. So that's all I've got. Thank you again. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.